Hello, and welcome to another special edition of Checks and Balances TV. Today we're pleased to interview investigator Jack Baher from Yakima, Washington. Mr. Baher has an extensive background in marketing and is a recognized authority in uncovering scams and frauds. For the last 20 years, Jack's mission has been to protect as many Americans as possible from scams, con artists, and Ponzi schemes. Some of his investigations have brought down huge multi-million dollar firms that never suspected that one man's initial efforts could stop them dead in their tracks. One of the companies Jack investigated and put out of business was Equinox International, who ended up on ABC's 2020 with Hugh Downs and John Stossel. Jack Baher is a man that the bad guys don't want to hear from, but we certainly do here at CBTV. Well, Jack, welcome to Checks and Balances TV. Appreciate it, Matt. Thank you very much. It's great to have you here. We really stand behind helping consumers across the country to make good decisions with their money. That's what we're all about. And so it's our, a privilege and an honor to have you here to, to help Americans uh, to watch out for the bad guys and to investigate companies properly and, and know when to say yes and know when to say no. Well, thank you, uh, Matt. I do feel privileged for an opportunity to be able to come here today and talk to some of your viewers and, and hopefully give them just a few bits of information that might help them avoid a uh, potential pitfall down the road. I've said this many times before, ounce of prevention worth a pound of cure. Right. And so maybe just something they'll gather today will help them from falling into some of the snafus that others before them have. Yeah, because we all know you can take a lifetime to earn up a sizable nest egg and a moment to have it evaporate. That's absolutely correct. Yep, yep. Well, to start off, tell us what was the catalyst that turned you from a very, very successful businessman for many years into what I call the ultimate consumer protection advocate against scams and frauds? Well, really, like a lot of businessmen today, uh, Matt, I was running a business and wanted to find different avenues to increase revenues doing some of the same things we were currently doing. And I had a, a mail order business in the security field. And so uh, a friend of mine that I'd known from a number of years came in and he was an agent and a representative from a network marketing company. And he told me about a company that he felt that if we put uh, inserts and flyers in some of our outgoing packages, we could garner uh, interest from those uh, other agents and so forth that we currently had and they would sell these and we'd make some additional revenue. Mm -hmm. Since it was non-competitive to what I was currently doing, I thought, well, that sounds like a great idea. So that's what we did. We started putting these out and I'll be honest, uh, Matt, I did what so many Americans today uh, don't do and that is I did no due diligence. Mm. I accepted at face value that this company was legit. I'd mm -hmm. heard enough about it to know that it was very successful. Mm -hmm. uh, so I went ahead and started doing some promoting. Uh, long story short, about 30 days into it, I started getting a number of individuals that were coming to me and saying, hey, uh, we're getting misled. We're getting misled really bad and people are taking our interest in hardcore pressure selling us into uh, a term that some folks are familiar with. It's called front loading. Mm. And in front loading, Matt, for those that are not aware of what it is, it's really a process in which uh, people will take an individual and try to buy them up to the top by getting them to essentially fill their garage full of a lot of products right. that they might need, but they don't need a lifetime supply of them <laughs> right. initially. Right. So this was what, what was happening. So I went to the individual or I contacted the company and tried to see if I could talk to the owner of the company and that wasn't working out initially. But eventually when he realized who I was and what my determination was, mm -hmm. um, he called me and in no uncertain terms threatened me so violently that I, had was, uh, I was appalled to be mm -hmm. quite honest with you. I'd never had anybody talk to me in that fashion in such a threatening manner. So um, I said, look, I think you've made a huge mistake here. I hung up the phone and we got into some litigation, Matt. And that litigation went on for years and years. Mm -hmm. And I started realizing another thing that a lot of Americans today uh, do find out, Matt, and that is that uh, unfortunately in today's world, 
not every attorney is going to be your salvation if you get into a scam. Right. Um, once you've been ripped off or taken advantage of, attorneys will come in and they'll start you in a process with a variety of things, starting with your complaint. Then you're going to go through interrogatories, requests for productions, depositions, motions, and this process goes on, Matt, and on and on. Um, and before we knew it, literally over three years had transpired. And so I, I started to get to the point where I realized I needed to do something that was going to be outside of the box. And that's when uh, I got an opportunity to speak to a, a man by the name of Mark Golden. He was the producer of 2020 and got the key man that was in our lawsuit, a fellow that I've known many years, his first name is Hugh, and get him on with uh, their process. And they hooked him up in an interview with John Stossel. Mm -hmm. Um, that's when the folks that do the program and do it very, very well went in with undercover cameras, Matt. They were able to catch at moments that if I had planned it ahead of time and had tried to prepare for it, I don't think we could have possibly have done it as well as it came out. And by the grace of God, it, it caught this man in some of the most compromising positions and then aired it to millions of people. Wow. Uh, another very long story short, this was the catalyst for his attorneys to contact my attorneys and say, we want to get this thing settled, we want to get it resolved, and all the plaintiffs in that particular instance were able to get their funds and their money back. Mm -hmm. And then yeah. shortly thereafter, Matt, um, the federal government came in with the SEC and they seized all of his assets, tracing things, as I understand it, clear to the Cayman Islands, and over $300 million was uh, pulled back for victims and then put into a receivership headed up by a fellow by the name of Rob Evans. He was the receiver out of Las Vegas, Nevada. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and then all of those folks got a piece of that action back. Um, the satisfaction from that, uh, Matt, then got me to the point where I said, you know, uh, it felt good being a part of seeing some people that felt there was just really no justice get their money back. And I said, I would love to start being someone to take the knowledge through this very unpleasant experience, mm -hmm. turn it around, use it for a positive, and then help other people through that maze and then uh, get them the type of relief that they're seeking without having to go through all the snafus I had went through. Mm -hmm. So that's, that was the catalyst. That was really one of the key events that took place that brought me to where I'm at today, yeah. Well, it's, it's almost like uh, you are a crusader. Um, you're a savior for some of these people who thought that their money is gone forever and suddenly um, they have some hope to recoup some or uh, most or perhaps even all of their money back. Well, yes, Matt, that's really is one of the things because, again, the average person, if you haven't had either the training, the fortitude, if you don't have the funds, uh, you, you will start down that same area. And, and what generally happens is the average person, if you're going up against a scam artist, the scam artist generally has more money. Right. And in the world today, the only way a guy gets help in the legal system is to be a criminal. And the reason for that? Criminals get a court-appointed attorney. That's true. Yeah, the, the taxpayers out there, you folks, are the ones that are actually paying to help Joe, who will go in and rob a place, commit a crime where he'll he'll do something violent and rob a place. The taxpayers pick up the tab. Yeah. Be Grandma Jones, who loses her entire retire, her entire excuse me her entire nest egg to a con artist. And she's got to pick up the tab. Right. Yeah. Nobody comes in with the money to help her. Right. That's one of the saddest things that happens to uh, mostly the elderly in our society. Right. Because this is a statistical thing, folks. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, some young folks get involved, but the bulk of the people are going to be people with a higher income or a bigger nest egg. And if they're completely wiped out, how much money do you think they have to go out and hire a good lawyer they to don't. fight the bad guy? Yeah. They don't. They don't. So ultimately, in the end, they sadly uh, put their head down 
and oftentimes don't tell their children or anybody right. what happened. Uh, and they uh, don't find out until their parents have passed on that they lost all their money. Yeah. So yeah. It, it is one of those type of things that if you have a way, and one of the things my company does is in a good high percent of the cases, about 95% of the time, we don't charge them a dime mm -hmm. unless we actually get their money back. Right. And yeah. then we get a percent. So right. that for the guy that's broke and has nothing, that helps them out a great deal because they don't have any money to do anything with. That's exactly right. So. Well, it's similar to like an attorney who an uh, uh, individual or client may have an auto accident with a trucking company and they don't charge the client anything, they get a percentage of the eventual settlement. Oh, very good point, Matt. Um, the unfortunate part of where attorneys are today, and I would challenge anybody out there who doubts me on this to do some checking like we did. It took us three months to find a firm and we had to go out of state in the Equinox case to help us uh, because the average attorney firm will take cases if it's been a accident and they can establish that you weren't at fault, somebody else was at fault, and that other side has insurance. Right. Then they'll take it on a contingency or medical malpractice, in which case they know the other side has insurance and somebody's going to pay. Yeah. They're happy to take those. Yeah. But in a business dispute, 99% uh, of the time, they're not going to take it. It's, it's well, sure. we'll help you out, sure. Yeah. Uh, we'll go ahead and get a $10,000 retainer, yeah. draw off that, mm -hmm. and then hit you up for more as we go. Exactly right. So. Great service you're doing to many Americans across the country. And I, I just can't help but ask now, are you currently working on any cases involving any kind of scams or frauds in any industry out there? Well, I appreciate that. Uh, actually, Matt, it's interesting that you'd ask because there's a couple of cases that we're right in the throes of. And the first one does involve uh, what it's my understanding, and we've researched this out, and if I'm in error, certainly I'd love for anybody to get a hold of us through the website and correct me. But it's my understanding it's the largest Ponzi scheme in network marketing history. Wow. And it involves an $850 million scam that was perpetrated by a company called Zeke Rewards. Now, they got so large, Matt, that it's my understanding over one million people across the United States and in some other countries got involved in this under the assumption that they were picking up 1.5% per day on their return. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm going to encourage people <laughs> to break out their calculators for just a moment and start doing the math. If you were one of the folks who put like $10,000 in and start doing 1.5% per day, compound that and see how long it would take for you to own most of the money on the planet. Once you start actually taking the time to roll numbers, you start to realize the math doesn't work, Matt. Mm, yeah. Now, there's a reason why, why the United States government requires people to get licenses to be financial advisors. And right. why that's upsetting to some, fee, some folks, I got to tell you that the reality is that most of the people that will get into a snafu is because they're working with people that aren't licensed. Does that mean that every person that goes to a licensed financial advisor isn't going to get taken? No. Uh, Madoff was licensed. Madoff's operations were licensed. Having said that, it's about odds. And if you're working with licensed financial advisors who have to report, have uh, you know rules and regulations that they're following and people they have to answer to, mm -hmm. that are finding out if you're an accredited investor who's handing you a prospectus and giving you a real clean understanding of what's going on with disclaimers and so forth, the odds of you falling in and being prey to one of these schemes is much less. Now, uh, Zeke Rewards just recently, over the last few weeks, indicted an individual by the name of Paul Burks. He was the founder and the CEO of this operation and has been charged by the federal government as being prosecuted. He, the problem in that is this. Matt, um, back to what I had said earlier about the ounce of prevention, uh, what's happening right now is I've got a number of Zeke folks that have come to me that not only did they lose their income because they were working hard, they weren't aware of all the facts that were surrounding it, but now after losing all their money, their income stream has been cut off, mm -hmm. 
Now let's, let's put the cherry on top of the cake here. They've got federal receivers that have come in and said, guess what, my friend? After all your income has been cut off, you've lost your money, we would like you to take any money you got over what you actually put into this and give it back to us or hire a lawyer and fight us and in the end you're still going to lose anyhow. And that's mm -hmm. the reality of yeah. what happens to so many of these folks. So that was kind of case A that you're talking about, where uh, individuals will get into a network marketing program, they haven't done their due diligence, they find themselves the victim of a scam, now they've lost their income, now they've got to pay it back. Mm -hmm. The other one we're doing is one that happened to me, Matt, in my own hometown. Mm -hmm. And it's a long story, so I'm not going to get into a great deal of it, but I, I, my warning today is this. I'm in the business mm -hmm. and I drop the ball folks on some of the important signs that I tell people to do all the time and that is just because you know someone doesn't necessarily mean that you can't be taken. They're a friend, a family member that encourages you to get involved in something and you go well hey my friend Fred told me about this it's got to be good. In this particular case, it was a well-known evangelist in our area, it, his family and his son, who I had known over 20 years, Matt. Mm. And the man took n over $40 million from people throughout the Pacific Northwest, mostly. Mm. And in the end, to escape justice, he drove down the very road I live in, full speed on his motorcycle onto a semi-truck and killed himself. So we're in the process of having to unravel that nasty quilt right now. Mm. And uh, that process has been long, it's been hard. A number of my own friends and family involved in that. So again, I can't emphasize enough to people out there, take the time to ask questions. Are they a, a, a company that is licensed? Have, there, have they had anybody that has done some reviews and due diligence on them that's independent, mm -hmm. that they can start reading and finding out information about? So even the mighty investigator Jack Baher has fallen into one of these scams or frauds. Absolutely, Matt. Because as, as you said, one of the keys is you knew somebody for 20 years. They were mm -hmm. an evangelist, so you automatically feel comfortable and confident that they're trustworthy people. Well, the family had been involved in, in ministry and so forth for many years. And uh, again, uh, you've got to remember, folks, this is absolutely no reflection on religion of any sort, but, but even the Bible itself warns of wolves in sheep's clothing. Right. So we have right. to be prudent. Yeah. We have to use some wisdom and we've got to take the resources available to us to do the due diligence and even Google in different places out there are some simple ways to do it. Yeah. Um, but before I forget, uh, one of the ones I mention to folks all the time, and it's such a simple one, Matt, mm -hmm. we've been taught since we uh, were little kids this, if it sounds too good to be true, it mm -hmm. probably is, and just use that as a starting point. Yeah. And if you start getting some of the red flags that are starting to come up, it's probably a good reason for it. Mm -hmm. If, it, if you're your going, gut. wow, that just, something doesn't sound right, trust your gut a little bit and start doing some research to find out. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Very uh, good wisdom, sometimes hard to do in the heat of emotional excitement about exactly. receiving some kind of gain that, that you think is better than what's out there normally and you've got a network of people who are already in it. It's sometimes hard to rein in those emotions, but very, very good uh, advice. Now, I understand that you were instrumental in helping a class of victims uh, recover over a hundred million dollars uh, from a similar company. Can, can you tell us about that? Well, uh, again, uh, the company that I think you're talking about, and that was the one with the 300 million, really uh, was the Equinox case. That was the one in which we had risen to that hundreds of millions of dollars. And that was a class of, of folks, again, 120,000 distributors. And I'm glad you brought that up again for this reason, because I, I forgot to bring up a point that is what well, well, most of the viewers will find quite interesting, and that is this. The one thing the litigation did bring out, Matt, was this. Um, you, for those that have ever done it, you go through a process called discovery. 
and we were able to discover some things that normally we wouldn't have, and that was this. Uh, they had over 120,000 distributors. We demanded to get records and determine who was make, actually making any money. Right. Sounded good because you'd get these folks that would get up there, they would roll into town in these BMWs, have their Rolex watch on, and they would uh, uh, do quite a presentation. Matt, it looked really good. <laughs> But what we discovered out of that 120,000 individuals, there was only nine that actually had any black ink on the books. And what that means is after their expenses, Matt, uh, versus the money they were getting, only nine people could show that they were making a profit. Yeah. Um, that's pretty important in business today. Uh, you, you could make a million dollars, but if you spend a million and one dollars, right. you lost a buck. Right. So. Uh, at the end of the day, uh, we were able to make a determination that uh, these nine individuals were his, also his personal round table, his little knights mm -hmm. around the round table, his own personal friends. No independent individuals that had been brought in were even making any money, which wow. made it the classic Ponzi scheme. Right. So this is another one of the things people need to look at. The reality was, as we reviewed this, uh, these guys that came in their their BMWs, they were most of the time leased. They were actually sleeping. They were so broke, they'd be sleeping in the back seat of their leased BMW. Those Rolexes were fake, Matt. It was all a big rouge yeah. that was getting put on to con and deceive folks. Wow, wow. Well, thank goodness uh, many of those investors got a good chunk of their money back. They did. With, uh, with you leading the charge and your efforts. So, so tell us now, uh, you recently investigated Carrot Bars International, which is a five-year-old uh, debt-free gold company out of Stuttgart, Germany. Um, it seems to be starting to go throughout the country and many other countries around the world. What did you discover from your investigation about Carrot Bars? Well, Matt, interestingly enough, when you start really going out and researching on companies, you discover good and bad. You always do. If, if, you're, if it's a big company out there and they don't have any negative things to be said about it, it's probably because uh, something isn't quite adding up because every company out there, you could name just about every Fortune 500 company, you're going to see some negative stuff. Right. So you have to, okay, negative, positive, which makes sense. Mm -hmm. Um, so we started seeing reviews, a lot of them uh, by individuals that wouldn't name themselves, uh, making claims. And one of them that came up quite a bit is, well, how do we know that the gold has the correct weight? How do we know it's 999.9%? So we thought, well, look, if we're going to have any interest in doing anything with this operation, we've got to get down to the facts. And the only way to, to establish facts is to start going underneath the surface and start right at the heart of some of the allegations. So that's what we did. We actually got uh, and went and got uh, orders that were randomly ordered on uh, carrot bars so that we could make determinations of the content of the purity. Mm -hmm. And that took going to location, to refineries, that were independent, mm -hmm. and what I mean by that, this is, isn't my second cousin or something <laughs> running it, right. who wants to uh, simply you know, pacify me and give it a good mark. Um, so after going to these places and having some very sophisticated uh, reviews of this, using some technology that's very advanced, um, they were able to make some determinations that even shocked them. Really? Uh, one of the fellows involved was, is giving strong consideration himself to get involved with carrot bars because he says, I haven't personally been able to refine anything this pure myself yet. Really? So whatever their process is, he says, it's good. <laughs> so we were very pleased. Um, there was additional things we went out and, and, and reviewed. Um, we wanted to randomly check with different individuals yeah, are they getting what they ordered? Mm -hmm. um, now, I've talked to a, a person, I won't mention their name here on uh, the program today, but somebody what we personally know that ordered from another gold company. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's been months, Matt, he still hasn't got his gold order. <laughs> so this becomes a per pretty important thing. If you're gonna yeah. start getting in the gold business, you wanna get your gold if exactly. you order it. Exactly. So we were able to determine that carrot bars uh, had a very 
intense, um, you know, concern about folks getting what they ordered. And that's one thing we've been able to establish. Folks order it, they get it. Um, another one of the things that's right up here on the top of the list, if you're going to get involved with a company such as this, I'm getting my paycheck. Yeah. So, uh, and one of the things, uh, just to go back uh, for a moment again to uh, pick on Zeke Rewards again for a second, because they deserve to be picked on, that <laughs> well, one of the key things that was happening to these folks, they weren't getting paychecks. And it was one of the signs right away that an iceberg had been hit. Mm. And of course, people by this time are running to get lifeboats and so forth. But uh, one of the key things you discover that there's a problem people don't, don't get their paychecks. Yeah, don't get paid. So uh, carrot bars in each uh, situation we've been able to ascertain from different folks that have, we've interviewed is that people are getting paid for the work that they do. So another important one, yeah. um, all the key elements that we have been reviewing so far has been nothing but positive and we ferreted through that process of trying to make determinations from a guy who gets in, who decides to get his package and then he's sitting home playing video games and he didn't make any money <laughs> and now he wants to get onto the computer yeah. mat and make a negative review right yeah um, under the name of Daffy Duck or something <laughs> yeah. you know I mean so you can put some of that but it takes some due diligence and yeah. so we're in that process of, of, of being able to get some uh, of the truth out there and so we're happy about that three important things I heard you say just to recap number one the gold is as advertised, Absolutely. which is 999.9 .9 pure 24 karat gold bullion. That is true. That it's being delivered in a timely manner, which that's is averaging true. two to up sometimes four weeks. Absolutely, and, and for an international deal, that's fair. Yeah, very fair. And number three is people are getting paid as advertised and promised in their uh, payout plan. That is absolutely factual. Well, that's, that's uh, some pretty good strong groundwork to believe in a company. Well, it is, and if, if, if you're looking to find out if there's, uh, and have me come on here today and say that Carrot Bars has never had a snafu, I'm not going to tell you that. Every right. company does. Sure. But there's main flagship type things that you want to look at. My product on time, I'm getting paid on time, the, what they offer is what you're getting. Mm -hmm. These are some key things, and as long as those elements are there, uh, the fact that uh, there was a little incident here or there, like any company, yeah. really is non-consequential. Yeah. It's those key issues that you have to be concerned with. Yep, yep. I know I ordered some, uh, I'm recently an affiliate with them, and, and ordered some extra gold cards to have to give to people, to show to people. Mm -hmm. And it was uh, the 1st of September, and it took about seven weeks to come to me. Mm -hmm. And that was understandable because they had just moved corporate offices and there are a lot more people ordering gold. So I had to wait a little bit longer, but it came uh, just as I ordered and um, I've been happy with it ever since. So well, like you said, maybe a little snap, a little delay here or there, but uh, any company that's growing. It's a growing curve. Have, that's, yeah. that's key yeah. issue, Matt, growing curves. And, yeah. and you're gonna have that. Um, I frankly was looking for something that wasn't so big, Matt, that there wasn't any room for growth left yeah. for the individual out there. I wanted to yeah. get in something. And, and, and if, if that is your quest, be prepared for a few growing curves, a few yeah. growing pains. That's right. going to happen. But yeah. again, look at those key elements. Right. And if you watch the key elements, the important ones, I think people will be rather pleased. And one of the things that I was impressed with, and I've been a financial advisor for 25 years, and when I was approached with Carrot Bars, it was with a grain of salt because mm -hmm. we have to investigate everything as I'm insurance licensed and securities licensed. I can't just jump into anything. Right. Uh, I'm one of those licensed people you talk about yes. that retirees and pre-retirees should work with uh, when talking about investments. And then my compliance officer did 30 days of due diligence and they came back with the same investigation that I had. Strong company, debt-free company, the gold is as advertised, the, the, the payment plan is people are receiving uh, uh, their money and the products being delivered in a timely basis. And one of the things I noticed about the product that I love so much, besides it being 999.9 .9 pure 24 karat gold bullion, is you have it uh, LBMA accredited, which is the oh, London yes. Bullion Market Association. And on the back side, you have the hologram technology, which mm -hmm. verifies its authenticity and has not been tampered with. Correct. So that, that has a lot to do with the quality of, of the gold itself as well, doesn't it? Oh, absolutely. Um, I, I wish I'd brought with me today, but I didn't. But I think folks can certainly uh, do some checking on themselves for this. There's a lot of counterfeit gold mm -hmm. out there. Yeah. 
And if you're out buying gold, be careful not to be the victim of one of these scams where somebody will offer you what appears to be a fantastic deal. You're buying some gold and people will get uh, penny wise and dollar foolish, Matt. Uh, they think they've gotten this great deal yeah. and all of a sudden they've discovered that they have fool's gold. <laughs> It isn't worth a plug nickel. It's copper underneath plated right. with uh, you know 24 karat gold. With at least with carat bars, you know what you're getting, and you've got the documentation with it to help prove what you've got. Yeah, yeah, that was important for me because of the LBMA accreditation, the assayer signature on the backside. You had a hologram and you had uh, a serial number. I mean. It, uh, there's no burden of proof from the owner to prove that it is pure gold. It's already been done on both sides of the, of the coin, so to speak, and, Correct. The, and the card. Correct. Great, great stuff. Uh, Jack, one of the things I want to go back to, I talked about the card having the LBMA certification or accreditation, which is the London Bullion Market Association. And I just want to spend a moment and get your input on it as well. Uh, the London Bullion Market Association only recognizes 54 or 55 gold refineries around the world, and there are thousands of them around the world, but they only recognize 54 or 55 of them that produce the highest quality gold. And, and the LBMA was really there to guarantee the, the quality of the gold to countries who bought gold, like America, Russia, China, other countries. This is one of the first times ever that an individual company Company that's offering the gold to citizens has the LBMA accreditation on it now. I mean, that is a really big deal, isn't it? Well, it's a big deal from several, from several different standpoints. One of which, which should be an important factor to viewers, um, is that if you're looking to, again, to get what it is that you're paying for, you want to have some of these steps in place. The average person may not understand and appreciate what's behind that. And if you do a little research on that yourself, you'll understand that that is way up there on the list of important items to check off uh, for uh, looking at a gold purchase. Because if you're just going down to a local um, pawn shop or gold dealer and getting stuff, you have no idea, nothing that gives you assurances of what you are getting. So again, um, I think if you're wanting to make this an important part of what you have for your own, um, whether it's uh, your future as far as uh, retirement or whatever it may be, I've been investing in gold for many years. I didn't know some of these things myself, but after 30 years now, I do. It's something that each one of the uh, viewers should take a close look at and make sure that's just one more of those things for a little peace of mind. Mm -hmm so that they know that they're in a better place and where, where they were with those companies that don't provide that. Yeah, and I like to say that Carrot Bars offers this high quality 24 karat gold bullion in small usable quantities yes. of one gram, two and a half, and five gram. Um, and they're usable in, in the fact that if you had an ounce of gold, first of all, if you take possession of it outside of a vault, now you have to prove it's solid gold. And the only way to do it is to melt it all down and have a gold refinery expert verify it's real gold. Um, where here you have small usable quantities where in countries such as Germany after Euro World War II their currency wasn't worth anything and the only currency that you could buy goods and services and trade and barter is if you had gold in small quantities like that. So it is uh, uh, very important that you have that quality gold but also in usable quantities in case something happens as a catastrophe with the currency in this country or in any other country. Well, that's absolutely correct, Matt. There's no assurances. There's one thing uh, that you understand about history and the future is that at this particular juncture, there's no way to predict it. But from a perspective of history, they claim history has a tendency to repeat itself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So while we have no indicator and in crystal ball for the future, we do have actually history to look at. My encouragement is right there with you, Matt. Uh, folks need to have that hedge. You need to hedge your bet and have something tangible in your hand mm -hmm. because a piece of paper that has no value isn't going to be worth much to you. That's right. A piece of paper is only worth what the government and the business owner that you're trying to buy something worth says it's worth. Correct. <laughs> that is so true. Uh, well, uh, Jack, you and I had the opportunity to speak on the main platform of Carrot Bar's convention recently in Las Vegas, and your topic was really on compliance, which is so important in my world. But, but tell our viewing audience uh, why that topic is so important today. 
Well, uh, I, you know, I wished I had uh, the ability to spend a couple of months with segments going over, but the short condensed reason that compliance is so important, Matt, is because the average person isn't going to have the accreditation you have in the licensing. They want to protect themselves too. Let's start there with the fact that if you're out and you're making representations to individuals, even if it's family members and saying, hey, I want to talk to you about an investment, you're violating the law. Uh, we just want people to understand, look, there's no reason to be scared to be involved in a program like Carrot Bars because there's so many positive. But at the same time, if we see a sheet of ice coming up here that you can slip and fall on, we're going to try to salt it or put up a warning flag here and say, well, we don't want you to slip and fall and get hurt here. Right. And so compliance becomes really important from a personal perspective so that you don't get yourself in trouble and get charged with a crime right. and then have the cost that you'll have to and legal and who knows what all else to your own personal reputation mm -hmm. but you also want to make sure that in fairness you're protecting the company too right. when you're out there representing a company and uh, you go out and make representations uh, you're putting a label on them too and if you're talking about this is a great investment or starting to give them accounting advice and things these are areas that you shouldn't tread just refer them to professionals if a person has a question about is gold a good investment well I think common sense would tell us that but rather than go out there and start laying out all these things that you may be on some unsafe footing your advice should be we'll talk to your investment advisor about mm -hmm. that a licensed one again yeah. I stress that with folks because everybody is either uh, thinks they're the best advisor, they think they're an attorney, they think they've got a great accounting advice, mm -hmm. but unless they're licensed, they don't have to then account to anybody for the advice they give down the road if you're the one that winds up in a snafu where you lose your money. Right. So uh, the compliance is so important just from the perspective you need to protect yourself, you need to protect the operations, you need to follow the rules, and it'll save you a lot of problems down the road, Matt. Yeah, very good point is that you can't use the word investment unless you are a securities licensed advisor. And what CareFars does is uh, nobody sells you gold. And as, as I always say, and most affiliates do, we're simply exchanging some of our U.S. currency that's going down in value virtually every day into yes. real currency, which is gold. That's and correct. so if I do it and tell you about it, and then you do it yourself with carrot bars, I'm not selling you anything. So it's not like an investment like buying stocks or bonds or mutual funds. We're just exchanging dollars for gold. And if you do the same thing, carrot bars happens to have a compensation plan that I get paid for you exchanging dollars for gold. And so if people have that mindset that you don't talk about it being an investment unless you're an investment advisor, that it's really just exchanging one currency for a better currency, which is gold. They can stay out of uh, uh, hot water uh, legally and using those terms. Is that what, is that what you agree Yeah, with? really. Uh, in essence, it's, it is a lot of common sense. Uh, people sometimes think that some of this is rocket science, Matt, and it's not. If they follow some of the very basic steps, they're going to keep themselves out of trouble. Yeah. Uh, even on the Carrot Bars website, they've made this simple for folks. By going there, you can go right to the compliance section, pick your language, whatever that may be. You can do a download. You can print that out. And then, um, as I said up on stage, I said, look, uh, I, I don't know anybody that has the worry and fear of walking into a theater and screaming fire in a crowded theater. If there wasn't a fire, they don't go into the airport and yell bomb. Uh, they don't have those fears. Why? Because they know better. All right, yeah. and it's the issue of knowing better. And once you look at some of the basic, easy to understand rules to follow, mm -hmm. you're going to learn those. They'll become second nature, yeah. and you're not going to have any worry because you know better. You know what to say, Matt, and that's the key. Yep, yep. So don't give tax advice, don't give legal advice, and don't give investment advice. Just tell people what you're doing, exchanging dollars for gold, and if they want to take advantage of it, they do it. And Sure. And like your progress. couple of friends, a uh, couple of family members, a couple of business associates just sharing some ideas. That's right. Uh, Carrot Bars, as we know, but I'm sure our viewers know, is an e-commerce company 
who within five years is already in 120 countries, which I think is unbelievable and phenomenal. Amazing. To get into each of those countries independently of any other country. And they have an affiliate uh, program for people who want to build a, sub build a substantial weekly residual income uh, with that affiliate program. So let me ask you, how does their affiliate program differ from, say, a traditional uh, multiple of a marketing uh, payout plan, which Carrot Bars is not an MLM company, but how does it differ from usually the, the, the MLM programs out there today? Well, some of the key components, and again, I'm not going to mention any names. Uh, there are some great network marketing companies out there, but I'd be remiss if I didn't tell folks that don't uh, already know this, that there are literally thousands of network marketing companies that pop up each year mm. in the world, okay? Uh, of those thousands, not too many make it past two, three years, and of course, Carrot Bars is long into its, its path to do that. But some of the key differences is this, and I've watched this happen over a quarter of a century. Uh, a lot of network marketing companies have come along and they encourage you to buy a whole pallet load of soap or, <laughs> or toothpaste or any vitamins, number of nutrition. vitamins <laughs> and the water filtration yes. systems and all sorts of stuff. And uh, they would jokingly refer to it as being garage qualified. I mean, you fill your garage full of these things and whether you actually sold them to the end user, you would be moving up to the king ruby diamond position or wherever it was in the company. Uh, exciting from one perspective and very depressing from the other when, you'll, when a lot of that winds up in a yard sale that you're trying to push for a couple of dollars. You're not going to find that problem with carry bars. Nobody's yeah. going to try to front load you a pallet load of gold. Yeah. And in the worst case scenario, you're not going to be trying to talk somebody into purchasing your gold down the road uh, and say, well, gee, will you buy this at a yard sale for a couple of dollars? Gold has its valuation. And so folks, um, the difference in that is that uh, when you have something from carrot bars in your hand, you've got a tangible good that has a real world value to it that you can be proud of. And you're not going to fall into these deals where your garage is full of a lot of products that's going to yeah. get dated and uh, probably wind up some of it in a landfill or in somebody else's garage. So it, that, from that perspective alone, mm -hmm. it's a huge plus sign for carrot bars. Yeah, yeah. I had somebody recently who said, well, what's, what's the downside here? And I said, well, I guess the worst thing is the company goes out of business and you end up maybe with a garage full of gold. Right. I mean, <laughs> right. you don't have to order it. It's completely up to you. So right. Care Bars, as, as you mentioned, is, does not mandate that you have to order so much gold every month to qualify no. for your overrides or commissions. And that's where most MLMs all have that requirement. And as you said, you have to order more and more to get to the higher levels. And so you do end up with a garage full or a basement full of stuff. Carrot Bars does not force anybody to buy any gold at all. That is correct. That was one of the issues that we looked at about making and, you know, and ensuring that they were following the rules is one of those very things. Once you start requiring that distrib distributors do this, buy that, they must this or must that, yeah. uh, you start running into some problems. The long-term viability of Carrot Bars is there because, again, they're taking the time to follow the rules, Matt. Yeah. Yeah. And less than, in my research, less than 1% of Americans own gold today. I mean, as a financial advisor for almost 25 years, I would always recommend people diversify, of course, their investments and have 10% up to 20% in precious metals like silver or mostly gold. I never had a good source to send them. I told them that, but I have a good source to send them. Now we have an excellent source where we have verifiable 24 karat gold bullion that they can now diversify some of those dollars into real gold. Um, and it, it, it's, it's an exciting prospect because um, there's going to be more and more people are going to want to buy Carrot Bars Gold and have it in their possession to keep with them, to put into a, a safe in the house or a lockbox in the bank or wherever Absolutely. they want to store it. Absolutely. And the historical valuations of where gold was at even just 10 years ago and then where we're at today is astronomical and it's mm -hmm. exciting. Well, from my research, uh, our dollar, our U.S. dollar, has decreased 98% since 1936, while gold has increased over 4,300%. So oh, yeah. it certainly retains its buying power. And some people will say, well, gold was at an all-time high two or three years ago. It's on the way down. And I say, the price of gold fluctuates, but the value of gold in keeping your buying power intact is always there. 
Well, one of the key interesting uh, features to that is anybody that has had any experience, or I don't care what type of commodity you're talking about, is the opportunities for people to capitalize the most is is in those ups, downs, dips. If it just constantly goes up, we may have a Fannie Mae, uh, Freddie Mac type situation where it pops eventually. But when you have those ups and downs in market that goes like this, those are buying opportunities. Yes. I'm not a financial adv advisor by any means, but what I'm saying is talk to your financial advisor and see if it's a good time to consider gold while it's down. <laughs> Yeah, well, we all know that with stocks, you know, the old term is you buy low and sell high. Sure. But a lot of people get that mixed around. They end up buying low, high and selling low. But certainly gold is is down from where it was at its ultimate high three years ago. So from a financial advisor standpoint, I can talk about investing. This is an excellent time to buy. Sure, you betcha. <laughs> it may not be the bottom of, of the bottom, but it sure is probably pretty close. It's, a, it's an entry point to consider for certain. Yes. Yep, exactly right. So again, Jack, there are some real differences between uh, Carrot Bars, which is not an MLM company. It's a network marketing. It's kind of like word of mouth advertising, just like if you see a good movie and you tell people about it and they go see it, well, that's kind of networking, a movie or a restaurant and, and they eat. Um, but uh, again, one of the differences as we talked about is that Carrot Bars does not require you to uh, buy gold every month to qualify for commissions or overrides. Another area that I think is a huge difference is that with traditional MLM, you can bring as many people to your front line as possible. And you want to because you're generally only paid a certain levels deep. So you want to bring on more people. The downside of that is that you can't work with all those hundred people or so on your front line. You hope some of them make it, most of them won't, but you got to keep recruiting more people. With Carrot Bars, you only have two lines. They call, some people call it two legs or two arms or two teams, uh, but it's left and it's a right team. And I may bring on 100 people, you may bring on 100 people. They have to go down the left team or the left leg or the right leg, which means in essence, you're helping to build their business as you're building yours. So you're all on the same team. You're not competing each other with each other. Do you find that to be a huge difference and an advantage with uh, Care Parts uh, dual payout plan? Well, the way you just laid it out um, is really perfect because you do, you become team players with each other instead of competing against each other. And a lot of the structures of standard network marketing companies almost encourages people to compete against each other. Um, this is a team effort. And the binary, I happen to know the guy that invented that and uh, have worked with him in the past. Um, and it was designed to create team effort. Mm -hmm. And I love the way that's structured. It, it creates more of a uh, fair and level playing ground for folks. And it, it creates that team effort so that you're all working together for a common goal. So uh, yeah. people, people to date, the feedback we've got is all positive. I just had a perfect example. Uh, just last, last night, yesterday evening, uh, one of my uh, affiliates who is a VIP um, got in, oh, about a month and a half ago and didn't do anything with it. Mm -hmm. I put so many people down his one leg. Every couple weeks I call and say, Phil, you got you got uh, 18 people under you and so many units. Phil, you got 35 people. Phil, you got 62 now. You have enough units that if you work the left leg, it's, it's worth like $6,000. He says, you know what, Matt, I got to start working this business. He said, this <laughs> thing really works. I said, that's right. You haven't done anything, but I'm building one of your two legs almost for you. And so last night he really got the vision. He got excited. He talked about some great people that he knows that he wants to help. And it's because of the binary, you call it binary, that means two-leg plan, that as you build their business, you're building your business, and then they feel like you're really trying to help them. You're not trying to just go out and recruit people for yourself. It, you're doing it to help them as well. Whole different mindset. It really is. Uh, you, you, you brought up a point that, um, if I'm being honest with everyone, I have to admit, that uh, one of the efforts that Pat was doing is just that. He was, he, he was working. We'd uh, taken advantage of just uh, getting a position and locking mm -hmm. into a spot. Right. And by the time he called up and said, you have over 1,000 people <laughs> in your crew, I started realizing that 
from a, just if nothing but a, a financial position for my business, that'd be pretty foolish to, to not take a closer look. And that was also one of those items that I neglected to mention. That was a catalyst for me too to start on my journey to doing more research. Uh, so it, it's, a, it's an interesting little feature that you have. And it's, an, again, another little benefit that you can do is you're getting people positioned with the program that you can start enticing them and having them take a closer look because of the work you're doing. And then you're, all of a sudden you're on the same team. Yep. You're working together. Yep. And the other aspect of this business that I love and my wife loves is that if it wasn't for this business, we wouldn't be working closely with the dozens of people that we brought right. in at, at this level. You call them once in a while, you send them a Christmas card. You know, there was some relationship a while ago that you had that you kind of maintain, but now we're working together. And that is so exciting to see good people you care about, family members, associates, business people, that now you're working together and creating something exciting uh, as a team. Well, I like that, and there's certainly nothing wrong with arts and crafts. But if you don't, <laughs> if you want to break out of an arts and crafts group, or you know, getting around with other types of little hobbies and things that folks do, uh, and get in with a, a group of people where you're meeting new people, you have common goals, other entrepreneurs, and have some exciting, fun times, this may be that group to get involved with. Uh, I, I think you're going to find some very exciting things in the future because some of the things me and you have had an opportunity to see that's in the pipeline yes. is indeed exciting, Matt. Yeah, this is just the beginning of something really big and really great and meaningful. And as I spoke at the uh, National uh, uh, Conference of Carrot Bars uh, the same day that you did in, in Vegas, I said it's, it's really, as I look at this business and the industry that we're in, the need for the product, uh, and, and the fact that American people worldwide want, some, worldwide want something to believe in and be excited about and be a part of, that it's like the beginning stage of the first couple of years of like Apple right. or Microsoft or Google. Right. You're part of that inner group that is just about ready to explode and you're right there positioned perfectly. So I like to say that uh, people so often will look at another individual who's done well and say, well, they're lucky. You know, they, they were in the right place at the right time. They had the right parents, right education, right connections. Luck is only defined as when opportunity meets preparation. Absolutely. And opportunity is knocking on the door. Oh, absolutely. The question is, are you prepared to see it and then take advantage of it? No, that's a great point. And I think that um, if people start looking at some of the work that's been done by the other folks, uh, such as ourselves that are taking the time to explain some of these things to them, uh, it's going to save them a little bit of legwork. Yes. And they can jump in on something where a lot of ground has already been plowed, Matt, exactly. and, and take advantage of the work that's been done and, and yeah. simply grab their surfboard, hit that wave, <laughs> and, and join with the rest of the fun. Yeah, a matter of fact, one of, one of my last comments at the conference was that all the hard work's been done at yeah. this point. You get to get in when the getting is good because yeah. all the foundation like a house has been laid. Right. We found that perfect <laughs> wave and we're just saying, yeah. hey, grab your board, hit it with us, and yeah, yeah, let's have a fun time. <laughs> That's great. Now, let me ask you about this um, because people can put anything they want to online that is negative that may or may not be true. So many times folks will, of course, Google is a big name. Well, let me just check this company. Let me Google this company to see if there are any negative reports about a firm. And as you have found out, and I have as well, that some of those reports are really not always true. So is that correct? And how, how can you combat that? Well, in this day and age, Matt, it is almost shameful that while we advance in technology and ways to educate ourselves, it can be a tool that can be used to destroy any human being. That's a good point. And uh, I've watched people that are some of the most upstanding and moral character wind up getting themselves smeared. Uh, unjustly by individuals who are cowards. They don't want to put a, a name to anything, but they can then make up a piece on uh, any number of pro, uh, different websites out there. And then it's, uh, some folks actually look at that as gospel truth because I read it on the internet. Right. I even saw a little commercial the other day that was funny and the guy was asking her about, well, where, where'd you hear that? She goes, well, the internet. And it, they always tell the truth on there. <laughs> Well, the internet doesn't always tell the truth, folks. Right, right. And so 
one of the things that you'll see, and I kind of hedged on it a little bit here earlier, is that there is negative things that people have to weigh out. And one of the key ones I always tell people is start looking at if the individuals identified themselves who's making it, it is a legitimate report, do they have a phone, uh, address, email, something where communication, so you can do some further research. Yep. Those are some key elements. I've went after a lot of bad guys in my career. I've had uh, people say negative things about me. And uh, there's ways that that can be uh, combated. And uh, I'll be happy if you're interested, Matt, to, to tell you a few ideas and suggestions of ways that uh, you know one can combat the negatives that get out there too. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's important because as you said, anybody can post something negative out there and it may not be true. Uh, but a, a, a consumer or somebody interested in carrot bars who uh, uh, Googles, let's say, uh, carrot bars, and I've done that, and I've seen uh, a lot more positive things, and I've seen a couple of negative things. But as you said, unless you're doing something in the marketplace and, 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 and people are, are talking about you, you're going to have both sides of the coin sometimes. Absolutely. But is it, is, is it really true or not? Or is it someone's opinion? As you said earlier, if you just sit down and say, well, hey, I bought a business package, I became an affiliate, didn't make anything, so this plan doesn't work. Well, really, they didn't work it. it right. Not that it didn't work. So, uh, what what does that give us an idea or two of, of what a company or an individual can do to uh, uh, to get to the truth of some negative reports on really any company? Well, uh, one of the, one of the things out there uh, that I see as a useful tool too is to look at uh, companies that do specialize in consumer advocacy. And as we've been out doing our due diligence, we've made contact with a number of these. We're submitting documents and information. We're trying to get other eyeballs to review this stuff and start making determinations independently on their own. And the importance of this is if you are paid to endorse something, if you're paid to go on a particular uh, crusade to push a particular item, it, it, it has a tendency sometimes to water down how much you can trust that if you've got a big uh, name individual that's going to say, gee, I love this face cream or I use this vitamin and, you know, I'm strong and big. But he's getting paid millions of dollars to say that. Right. Uh, it's, it, it doesn't put as much credibility of, as if you're reading something and you find out that a particular individual who's well known uh, was seen taking a particular product. People go, wow, well, if they're using that and they're not getting paid to tell anybody, but clearly they're using it, yeah. I, I maybe I'll take and I'll use that product. So uh, one of the things that Carrot Bars has, Matt, that I'm unaware that anybody else has out there, and that is a consumer advocacy site that's called fraudandscam.com, mm. has now made a blurb on there saying they're in the process of doing some due diligence. They've posted a number of things on there that have uh, been able to uh, pinpoint some of those negative allegations out there and have independent people say we have been able to refute this. Mm -hmm. In addition to that, uh, now they have a letter from an international attorney that has went out and put his name, his phone number out there for his reputation to be on the line and said, I've done some research, here's my findings. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know about the rest of you, but I'm going to put a little bit more credibility into an international attorney that's willing to put his name and reputation on the line to say, here's some of what I've been able to discover as, a, uh, you know, as opposed to individuals wanting to do a hatchet job right. for whatever their cause and reason is uh, right. without having much credibility behind it. Yeah. And that, that uh, website again is uh, Scam and Fraud? No, it's FraudandScam.com. FraudandScam.com. And my understanding, correct me if I'm wrong, that um, Carrot Bars is the only positive report that they have on that site up to I've this never point. known them to do a positive review on anybody, Matt. <laughs> Their business is to expose bad guys. <laughs> But I think um, in some of what I have been able to research out because I'm in this business, that there is uh, more than one site that has made a determination that it might not be a bad idea to occasionally throw a bone out there, so to speak, and have a positive review because yeah. 
you know, negativity is, is one of those things that bombards our society today. Yeah. And while it's important for people to know those pitfalls and where those potholes in the road is at so they don't uh, hit them, yeah. um, they've given some consideration and finally decided maybe when we find some good companies out there working hard offering legitimate products that have been able to be determined as good and legit, that we should maybe put a positive uh, plug once in a while too. Yeah. And so I was really excited to see that that's starting to take place for Carrot Bars. That's, uh, that's a huge bit of credibility uh, for Carrot Bars and for people that are investigating whether they think uh, Carrot Bars is a credible company and if they should get involved to know something like that. So, oh, absolutely. Uh, Makes a huge difference in that process of just doing your own due diligence. Yep, yep. Uh, so again, fraudandscam.com. Fraudandscam.com. And it's our hope that as we continue to get documents, uh, Matt, and review them and submit them to other places, uh, that more are going to be doing some positive stories. And I hear little rumblings that we maybe have one in the next 30 days that might be doing something positive Wonderful. too. Super. So, yeah. Good news is always good to hear, isn't it? It is. Just listen to the evening news, it's all about bad news. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Well, Jack, you've been extremely successful in many other business ventures in the past. So let me ask, I, I really can't wait to ask, uh, what attracted you and why did you get involved as an affiliate with Care Bars International? Well, I had a very good friend that I've known a number of years that had approached me with it and said, Jack, you need to take a look at this. And I said, man, I am so busy with so many things. Aren't we all? We are getting so busy being busy, huh? Sometimes you don't have time to look at some of the, some of the good things in life. And he did what I've encouraged a number of people to do with any number of different business ventures and don't always take no for the final answer. Okay, so Pat came to me uh, several more times and said, hey, I've got something I want you to look at. I want you to look at this. And the bug got planted, Matt. But once it was planted, I had to do what I do. Mm -hmm. And I had to start doing some due diligence. Yeah. And I had to start doing some checking. I'd heard all these positive things from Pat, but I hadn't actually did any of my own research yet. Mm. So it was at that point that I actually did start looking, reviewing, seeing some negative, seeing some positive, and then knew I needed to do my own research to ferret through mm -hmm. what's truth, what's facts, what is fiction. Yeah, very so, important. Oh yeah. So after that investigation or period of time, then you, decided it was a real company, as you said, that has real gold, uh, that's paying out on time, delivering it on a timely basis, then you yourself got involved as an affiliate. Yeah, once I was able to establish to my own satisfaction that it was what it was and what, yeah. they, what I was hearing, then I made a decision that, uh, to make a very honest, uh, you know, revelation about myself, uh, you know, 25 years of doing this has taken a toll on me as a person. You're working with a lot of negative type situations mm -hmm. and I have enjoyed all of it and I've enjoyed helping folks. But I got to tell you that as I've gotten older, I've wanted to start graduating from some of this. Let some of the younger men, because it is a young man's job to get out there. I've had to travel to some pretty crazy places and Panama and South America going after wow. bad guys and things. And I wanted to find something exciting and motivating that both me and my wife would enjoy. Mm -hmm. And so as we started looking at this, I could, I could see a, a future in this because I never really pictured myself as somebody that would retire, uh, per, you know, per se. And if we had something we could do and continue to do and enjoy doing, um, then we, we, would, we would be able to uh, get involved with Carrot Bars. And, and it fit all those things. And I've said mm -hmm. many times to folks, find something that you love to do and you never really work a day in your life. Boy, yes. And so uh, we could see ourselves doing this even in a semi-retirement yeah. and having something uh, that added additional revenue, uh, that's something that we could uh, not only utilize for ourselves, but our family and children and so yeah. forth. Uh, but enjoy and be able to meet a lot of new exciting folks and that's what's already starting to happen. So. And, and myself and my lovely wife Michelle who's in the studio today with us, um, it is a family affair. It's it a is. couple affair and, and you and Lisa the same way. It's something you can do together. Uh, it's something that is, is actually uh, changing people's financial future, both on securing their, their retirement dollars with real currency gold, but the income opportunity with people able to make a weekly residual income 
of, uh, in some cases, I'm seeing ten, twenty, thirty thousand dollars a week and more with care bars, and the company is just really getting started. Um, it is 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 life changing for other people. So it's one thing to do it for yourself, but it's another to give it to someone else and watch them prosper and grow. And it's just like. Um, uh, a great service to, to mankind or those people that you come in contact with that uh, you have an opportunity that can literally change their life forever. Well, you bring up an excellent point, Matt, because the last thing that somebody wants to do is mention something to a family member that turns out to be one of those snafus we talked about earlier. Yeah. So when you can hand somebody a good opportunity that you know could be good for them and their family, mm -hmm. it's a good feeling because yeah. knowing that you supplied them with the type of uh, knowledge of your own re research and due diligence and that they're now being able to add some additional income to their families and so yeah. forth is a good feeling. Um, at the same time, if you just go off you know, uh, and hand them something that you don't know a whole lot about. You could be like one of the companies we talked about a little earlier with Zeke, right, right. and now these folks have lost their money and they're being uh, went after by a government agency. So right. the confidence that you can feel working with a company with a good reputation like Care right. Bars is something that can bring a little peace of mind to folks. Yeah, and the other concept that I heard about Care Bars, which is true, is that we're not spending money on a product that we're going to use up in a month and have to buy more. We're really uh, we're exchanging dollars for currency. So we're just Correct. saving it in a more efficient, more valuable way. And that's a whole different concept than just buying products that are, are going to be consumable. Yes, yes, that's an absolutely excellent point. And I think that's, again, something that people can feel comfortable with because they don't feel like, unless I'm continuing to buy more and more and more of this and use it, um, I'm not going to have a level of success. Right. That's not a requirement in this yeah, business. Yeah, and you also brought up something I want to just... Uh, uh, add a comment to, and that is that uh, you said Pat Gamble had talked to you a couple of times about care bars, and you said, no, 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 too busy, too busy, but he kept after you professionally until he could get your attention, and then you, you got involved. Um, yeah, as you said, no doesn't always mean no. I always say that no means they don't know enough to say right. yes yet. So if you really care about them, and you really believe in this company and opportunity, love them and care them about them enough to approach them in a different way at a different time. And we have a number of people on our uh, little short list that uh, uh, have said no, not now, but we're going to keep touching. And I've had a number of folks that have come on after the initial contact that were grateful that I was persistent and didn't let them go. Absolutely. So it's, it's, it really is, as I see it, in my 40 years of being in business, Jack, I believe in my heart and soul it's the greatest business opportunity in America and most likely around the world. Well, it's, it's a good assessment that you've been able to make and a determination that I think that people can have some confidence in, Matt, because what I'm seeing that I like is an awful lot of professionals that have good backgrounds that are coming into this. Uh, we're seeing the type of uh, quality of individuals that are making decisions to get involved that I haven't seen in a long time, yeah. and that's a good sign. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we have uh, doctors, uh, dentists, uh, millionaires, business people. Um, it, it, it's amazing. It's almost like the more successful they are, the, the easier it is for them to see the importance of, of owning pure 24 karat gold bullion. And the, and the, uh, the co dual compensation plan is uh, like none other. Well, and some of the key people that had a huge influence in my life growing up, like Jim Rohn, used to mention over and over again about finding successful individuals and emulate what they're doing. And when you see the herd of professionals that are getting involved in Carrot Bars and you're an individual that hasn't had a lot of success of your own, uh, you got to follow where the crowds are heading of individuals that do have a little bit more experience. And then, uh, you know, what are they getting involved in? And then grab a hold of that and then uh, follow some of the steps that they're doing. And I think that is going to bring about some of that same type of success. The success level is contingent about watching and viewing the map that they're following mm -hmm. and then following it yourself. That's exactly right. Exactly right. Well, Jack, I want to thank you for coming all the way out from your uh, from central uh, Washington to be with us in Middle Tennessee. Uh, it's not easy getting out here. You had to be on three different yeah. planes, I understand. That's right. It here. is quite a little trip. <laughs> <laughs> so we really, really appreciate that. And is there any final thought you want to leave with our viewers about the work that you've done or are doing or care bars or, or just anything at all? Well, just that if, if you 
uh, want to try to keep up with some of what's going on, our, our website at clientsarefirst.com, I believe they'll put it up on the site, is there. Um, if you have had a bad experience and need some help, submit it. Um, we certainly take a look at seeing if we can help folks that have been in a bad situation. But we, we are going to try to uh, keep you updated on some of the things that we're working. Matt has been instrumental in working together and showing his interest and in actual genuine concern for people. It's nice to meet somebody like yourself, Matt, that I could sense has a genuine concern for people. Making money is great, folks. It's how we all put food on the table. But when you have a genuine concern and you're saying, hey, I'd like to see if we can educate people. I've had people come up and say, well, ignorance is bliss. But I don't know about you, Matt. I'd say ignorance is hell. That's right. <laughs> and when, you, when you're ignorant <laughs> and you don't learn, uh, it can be a very dark and unpleasant situation. Yep. By getting educated, and this is certainly a good format, yep. people can uh, take advantage of the knowledge. And with knowledge comes power. And with power yes. becomes uh, finding those avenues that can create a better future for yourself and your family. That's right. Well, both you and I have made a lot of money in our lifetimes. But we're kind of in that area of our life now. We want to help bless and, and help other people to do well. And that's Absolutely. It's so much more exciting than doing it for yourself to live vicariously through hundreds and perhaps thousands of others that we can sure. positively affect with their life. It is a pay it forward mentality. I like that concept and um, I encourage everybody else out there. Um, if you do have somebody uh, that you haven't spoke for in a while, I talked to somebody at the convention and, and we were talking about some of the unpleasantries of life and the individuals you may have even had as enemies. Revisit some of these people. Maybe it's a good opportunity that you may have had a falling out with a friend or family member mm -hmm. and it's a good opportunity to come together and say, I just want to let you in on something that might be good. Yeah. We can find some common interest in. Don't rule people out. Some of the people that you least think might get involved in a good program like this may be your best uh, you know, individuals that you bring in as an independent affiliate. It's a good point. I often say that uh, you don't know who's going to take it and run with it and who's going to sit with it and do nothing with it. So Correct. give everybody the opportunity Absolutely. to make their own decision. You betcha. Jack, again, thanks so much you for bet. coming out to Checks and Balance Appreciate TV. It. This is one of our best interviews yet. Oh, well, thank you so and much, Matt. I hope to have you back again sometime in the near future. Absolutely. Wonderful. Well, for more information on the work that Jack does to protect Americans' hard-earned money from scammers, con artists, and Ponzi schemes, be sure to visit his website at www.clientsrfirst.com. That's www.clients, the letter R, the word first, dot com. Thank you for watching another special edition of Checks and Balances TV. Until then, have a great day.